And you can do that by looking at what Muslims actually say in the Middle East. There was a Pew Research poll on Muslim attitudes in the Middle East. Again, in most of these countries, the vast majority of Muslims support these intolerant beliefs. This is not a tiny minority, and this is not a religion of peace. And we're putting Europe under great threat in a security sense by importing this mass wave of intolerance. George in Connecticut, you're on the air with Tommy Robinson. Go ahead, George. Hi, Tommy. Um, it's uh, nice Hi, to speak to you. I'm just ha I I'm wondering if you happen to know uh, uh, Lutz Bachmann out in Germany. I, you've been to many demonstrations. Why are you out in Germany at all? I know Lutz, yeah. You know, Lutz, yeah, he may actually be a cousin of mine. I don't know for sure, but, but uh, I, I looked up some stuff, and it, he actually may be a cousin. I just find the whole uh, debate on, on this stuff is ridiculous because uh, you should really bring out, you know, you should try to find some uh, 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 people who have converted from Islam. There's lots of them. that You can find them all over the web, and they, if they could get, bring some of them to speak out about the religion and what the real, real, real deal is, I think you'd convert a lot of people because it would be kind of hard for both Muslims and these uh, numbskulls that want to believe that it's a, pe a, a peaceful religion uh, would uh, convert a lot of them. But, I mean, I used to know, uh, I used to be in with a lot of Muslims when I was in college uh, because I was into uh, understanding all types of religions because I lived in Asia and various other places. And I'll tell you, I was in diplomatic circles because I had some pretty high friends. And when I went to their houses, some of the, some of the security people would show me their their collection, because I have German background, their collection of, of Nazi uh, books and stuff like that, and how they revered uh, the killing of Jews and stuff like that. So these people are the real, real Muslim Nazis. When people say Islamo-Nazis, they really are. I mean, I'm not to say all of them, but at the highest levels, that's what their attitude is. I mean, I can say that from actually meeting these people at the highest levels and speaking well, to them and, to and the way they talk. You can see that by the countries where Mein Kampf is the best seller. It's the cost of Middle East. And also, when you talk about ex-Muslims, one of our speakers on Saturday at our rally in Birmingham was a, an ex-Muslim called Mohammed from Pakistan. And he gave a speech about his human rights and the ability. We have three to 4,000 apostates from Islam high in the UK. And there's no charity to help them. There's no charity or government support to help these people get out, out of what necessarily is a cult. And also, just on the Lutz Backman um, point, I met Lutz, and it was so refreshing because, look, I, I have a bit of a checkered history, but if it wasn't for that checkered history or, or the mindset I had of it as a youth growing up, I wouldn't have been able to do or say the things I'm doing. I'd have, I'd have run away at the first beating I had, the first terrorist threat, the first time they come, the police come to my house and told my wife, that, my wife and me that terrorists want to kill us. We would have stopped. Now, Lutz is the same. When I met Lutz, I know full well that that organisation and those leaders are not going to back down, they're not going to stop. Because it takes a certain sort of character, and Lutz is that character. That's why I've got to take my in admiration at him and, and Ziggy and the people behind the team in Germany. And they're as far away from Nazis as you can get. That's why this whole mainstream media perception of, of people and what, what that actually does, the image. And it's all done to try and stop, stop support. It's done, it's done for people it, to, to make it dirty, to make it a dirty thing to support groups like ours. But luckily, so many people see through the mainstream media narrative now. And uh, hopefully, hopefully Europe's rising, especially where Eastern Europe's rising. We just need to get Western Europe rising. <laughs> OK, George, thanks for the call. Thanks, George. Yeah, just picking up on that, Tommy, on the, the, the Nazi issue, they tried to demonise you. From what I read a few days ago, Pegida is actually taking steps now to expunge these extremist elements from their ranks that are trying to glom onto it. You tweeted about a guy with a, a neo-Nazi tattoo who you uh, basically banned from attending the demonstration. Tell us about that process of um, filtering out these actual extremists. Well, I don't think in Germany they have that problem. From any of the demonstrations I've been out there, they are mainstream. They've got ordinary mainstream, old people, young people, um, families come in. They've got a complete mixture uh, of the public. When, when I went on Saturday, I've made it very clear. People know where I stand on this issue. Um, we're opposed to Islam as an ideology. Nothing to do with colour of skin, nothing to do with race. It's got nothing to do with it. So I turned up on Saturday and um, I walked into a hotel just in the morning and there was a man and lady there and they, start, they started talking to me. So I was talking to them. They said they were there for the protest. I looked down at the man's hand and he had a swast a sign. 
um, swastika sign on his hand, tattooed. And then I looked at his face, his whole face, his whole, whole face was a tattoo. But he had 1488 under his eye. And then he had a, he had a star of angels on his forehead with evil. And I just said, what? you're not coming to a protest, you're not coming to our demonstration. And I said, there's, there's a zero percent chance I'm being seen anywhere with you or you're walking on our demonstration with us. And then he got up and I just said, you need to leave. And he, and he did leave. And then now I'm getting a back, not backlash, but I'm getting people messaging me saying, why did you keep this bloke out? But none of the people that come on the demonstration, it's just obviously in the UK, the real far right, which there isn't many of them, but the real far right despise me. I'm seen as a Zionist and, and, um, and, and, a, and a race traitor. And I said, look, it's simply for sticking to my morals. My, my morals are that to win this battle anyway in the UK, we need every community, and we need every community on board. And I have a problem with, even when it comes to immigration, I don't have a problem with immigration per se, myself. I have a problem with Islamic immigration. Um, most of the people I know are sons of immigrants. My mother was an immigrant into the UK. My, my problem comes from the fact that most of those other immigrants or uh, uh, European immigrants that would come are culturally and ethically and morally the same as us. That's a very, very different situation with the Muslim immigrants. So as you've said, you said about the Pew research, I believe about 86% of Pakistanis think that apostasy should be punishable by death. That's backwards. That's backward, and it's not what we want in this country. And because of that mindset, that's why Mohammed, who is, or, or, or Adam as he now is, that's why our first speaker on Saturday has been living in hiding in the UK in, for 20 years. Living in hiding. I've met quite a few apostates who are living in hiding because they fear their families, their mums, their, their dads will kill them. Um, well, Islam's what a religion of peace, Tommy. How could they possibly think that? That's it. That, but that is what we're importing, and, and, and the sooner people see that, and you... You are right, and it is valuable that we hear from ex-Muslims, which is why hopefully Mohammed now um, in the UK, well, his, his old name was Mohammed, will play a leading role in that. Because he stood up on stage, and in his speech he said, he said, you keep calling Tommy a racist. You keep calling him a, a racist. And he said, what are you going to call me? What are you going to call me? I'm from Pakistan. And, and he also bought his Pakistan flag, which, to be honest, the symbol, symbolism of what that flag represents for me, I don't like it because of all the Pakistani grooming gangs, because of Pakistan as a country, because of the blasphemy laws, because of all these things. But I'm not going to tell him he can't bring his flag. But he held his flag because there's millions of Christians in Pakistan who are persecuted, who are targeted. But what he, when he stood up, he said, he said, this is the flag of my heritage. This is where I'm from. He said, but I'm British first, Pakistani second. And also I had a lot of people trying to give me a bit of flag because he, he had his country's flag there. He was standing up on stage, but his life in danger openly calling on with Islam in the UK. And if he wants to fly his own country's flag, then I'm not going to tell him he can't. So, um, but yeah, we have, uh, we have so much to do. <laughs> so many problems. And what we have to remember, of course, is that many ex-Muslims and indeed current Muslims stand up against this intolerance and there they become the immediate targets of the regressive left. We had a report put out by a left-wing group a few weeks ago called Hope Not Hate. They had a list of, quote, anti-Muslim bigots. One of the people included on that list was a devout Muslim woman who campaigns against honor killing. She was put on a list of anti-Muslim bigots. So again, the, the regressive left has aligned with Islamists to the point where they now attack constantly people like, you know, Ayan Hirsi Ali, people like Majid Nawaz, who are standing up for the true reformation of Islam. Those people are the ideological bedfellows of Islamists, and they're part of the problem, which is why we need to keep calling them out. We'll be back with the final segment with Tommy Robinson. We've got David Knight coming up in the fourth hour. Breaking news at Infowars.com. But join us for the final segment coming up. Top story up on Infowars.com. Twitter announces partnership with Islamist feminists to restrict free speech. Twitter is organizing a trust and safety council with Islamists and feminists because, of course, they're the perfect source to go for, to for free speech control to prevent abuse, harassment and bullying, which critics point out will lead to mass censorship on Twitter. They've already suspended the account of yet another prominent critic of Islam, Christina Lila, Saudi Arabia is Twitter's second biggest shareholder. I wonder if they've had any influence now as Twitter moves towards outright censorship. Their stock is tanking. Top uh, executives within Twitter are leaving the company, and yet they still continue to march forward with these authoritarian 
censorious policies aided by uh, that, again, that magic duo of Islamists and feminists who are aligned because they both hate free speech. But Tommy, we got a few minutes left here just summing up. We've got all these top security experts throughout Europe warning that, that if this mass immigration madness is not reversed, we're going to see civil unrest, maybe even war. Tell people where you think it's heading and then in summary uh, how they can support you and get the book. Um, that's exactly where it is headed, unfortunately. Unless we see in the next coming year a mass, mass movement of people putting immense pressure, because there's nothing our political leaders fear more than a mass movement of people. That's what we need to see. And just while you was on that about the, the left-wing group, that was Hope Not Hate who, who, who made that report um, calling moderate Muslims anti-Muslim bigots. You have to look at where their funding comes from. That group's funding comes from open, door, open border policy groups in the United States as well. So, and I've met the leader of there, and he doesn't actually believe what he's, what he's writing. So a lot of these people are doing it for an agenda and for, for a career path, because there's, there's, there's so much money on the left. But um, people can get behind and support us just by joining. There is an anti-Islamist group in every country, pretty much, now. And we're trying to coordinate them. We're trying to bring them all together under one banner. So that on certain times of the year, I believe the next date will be sometime now in May. And then when that date comes in May, we'll take to the streets in the UK, in Germany, in Holland, in in Australia, we hope that people in, in America join on, that people in Canada join on, and that across the globe, at the same moment, at the same time, people are showing solidarity and unity with each other and, and showing some sort of resistance to what, what, what's being forced upon our country. Because that's what it is, it's being forced upon us. And, um, and then with regards to the book, yeah, the book, the book is just basically my story, it's called Enemy of the State, and it's the, it's the, the worrying story of the, the, of the fact that the, the length of the state will go to and just how much influence Islam has already. The lengths they'll go to to silence and stop and disrupt any criticism of Islam. And just for example, I'm in court again tomorrow. I'm in court again tomorrow. It's, a, it's just, it's never ending. And, and, that's, and that's to tie you down and stop you and swamp you so much that you just drown in, 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 uh, in, in problems of the state of government. So you don't have any energy or time to, to tackle what, what, what's happening to the country. But, yeah, that's basically it. And you can get that on TommyRobinson.co.uk or you can get it on Amazon. You can get it on Kindle in America, Kindle, Kindle in most countries. So. Okay, that's going to wrap it up. Tommy, we'll be sure to have you back on as this unfolds. Thank you very Thanks much. for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. There goes Tommy Robinson.